Welcome. My name is Sue. For those of you who do not know who I am, I'm married to Pastor Dennis, the Asian pastor that runs around. Um, we've been married for 18 years by God's grace and have four beautiful children, elementary, middle, and high school age. Um, and so life is a bit busy. <laughs> But I always look forward to coming here um, and to see everybody here. Um, so I'm grateful to share with you today for the study, Becoming a Woman of Promise Good. Um, just a quick review, because I don't know if you know, but we've gone through nine attributes, and now this is our tenth. Um, becoming a woman uh, of God includes that we, we honor God, that we're reverent behavior, that we are women of impact, we're not slanderers, we're fruitful, not given much to wine. We're women of worth, that we're teachers of good things. Um, that we're women of worship, we love our children. That we're wise, that we're discreet. Um, and we're women of devotion, that we're chaste, um, pure and holy before the Lord. Um, that we're women who are willing, um, that we're homemakers. And our tenth attribute today is becoming women of promise, good. We, like um, the women that we're studying today, is Jochebed. Uh, we could make good and righteous choices by choosing to hold on to God's promise. Did you know that God is a promise keeper? Yes. Psalms 145.13 says, For your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. You rule throughout all generations. The Lord always keeps his promises. He's faithful in all that he does. I love... Um, sorry, I'm like learning how to use this. Um, Titus 2, 3-5. It says here, um, this is our passage that we've been meditating on for the last 10 weeks or so. And um, I pray that you would read it um, and meditate on it because there's so much wisdom in it. And um, it's, you saw what happened this Easter, right? Um, how over 100 believers came to know the Lord. And uh, praise God. Praise God. And as he's adding new believers to our church daily, um, his desire is that we come alongside and help each other grow in the faith, especially the new sisters that said, just said yes to Jesus. Um, I fully gave my life to the Lord here at church. Um, and as a new believer, it can be very discouraging because God is doing a work that's pretty radical, right? He's changing you from inside out, and there's a lot to process. And so um, it can be pretty scary to walk through a big church and not know anybody, and so the Lord, um, through the years, has added um, to my life a godly family. I believe that we're all sisters here in the Lord. And um, as we come, um, I have sisters and aunties and now Nana, <laughs> my Nana, that prays for me, but to, to pray for us and help us to grow stronger. And um, if I highlighted the word in this passage, um, Titus 2, 3 to 5. It says, teach, teach, train, and to do good is, is the focus today. And the reason why we do what we do is, is so that we can honor God and that we, are, uh, that we will not bring shame on his name. And so I pray that um, no matter how long we've been walking with the Lord or how long, or maybe we're just a new believer, we just said yesterday, yes to Jesus, and we rededicated our life on Sunday to the Lord, saying that I'm going to do, I'm going to trust you, God. I pray that we'll always be teachable. I think that sometimes in our walk, we tend to kind of get comfortable and closed up, it's easy to do, right? Because of life, um, so that we would be teachable, but we would also be in a place where we're always learning and growing in the word. Amen? Amen. So the word of God is so rich that I, I don't have all the wisdom and knowledge, um, but I know that through this study, the Lord has ministered to me some th key things. So I pray that it encourages you. And um, those are the three areas that the Lord showed me. Um, how do we make good and righteous choices in a world that does not honor God? Um, can we all become women of promise? What do you think? Philippians 2.13 says, For God is working in you, giving you the desire and power to do what pleases him. Thank God. Because, um, because if we love what is good to God, and if we live um, in his goodness, then we will leave a God testimony for others to see. The first thing is love what is good to God. He gives us a new heart to love him and the things that he loves. I don't know about you, but 
um, when I first came to know the Lord, I didn't realize that I was not a good person. <laughs> and that's just being honest. Like, because, you know, when you're Asian, it's like, you have to be perfect, you know? And so, sorry for all the Asian people. But, um, but humility is something that we must learn. And Psalms 25, 9 says that he leads the humble in doing right, teaching them his way. Um, Romans 7, 18 says that if you're not convinced, it says in God's word, and I know that nothing good lives in me, and that is my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. Jeremiah 17, 9, you all know this verse, the human heart is the most deceitful of all things. Um, and I think about the opposite of humility is, is um, if we don't humble ourselves before God, we're going to be really prideful. And our decisions will be based on what we believe is good and right. How many times have we done that, right? We think this is what we should do, but we're not asking God. And so we, become, we, be, we make decisions based on what we think. And so some examples would be like, um, I can be a Christian on my own. I do not need help. I'm good. And um, God's word tells us that we need to be humble. And that humility from human wisdom actually ends in humiliation. Um, he wants us to live, um, he wants us to love his word. When I first mer- uh, met my husband, I was still you know, learning about God and um, being in a relationship, sometimes you want like a love letter, you know, like you're beautiful, want to hang out with you. And he was writing a lot of psalms. <laughs> and my flesh was saying, I don't want a psalm. <laughs> I want you to, like, you know, tell me how much you care about me. And, and, he, and I know he does, but I think, like, our heart, uh, we need to be in a place where we really, truly love God's word because it's alive and active. In Psalms 116.5, it says that God is good, he's kind and merciful. Sometimes we question God's motives and why he does what he does, and we question whether God is good, right? Um, is he good in every situation? Maybe for other people, but not for me. And that's not true because the word says that he's good, kind, and merciful. And that he's given everything, all scripture, is inspired by God and is useful to teach us how to live right before him. Um, Psalms 119.11 is a good psalm to remember because we want to hide our word, his word in our heart so that we don't sin against him. And he wants, us to, um, he wants to help us through the Holy Spirit. When I received Jesus into my life, Um, I said yes when I was in sixth grade, but there was a long period of time in my life where I didn't really know the Holy Spirit. And that's just honest, you know, like when you're not grounded in the Word. Um, And I did a lot of things in my own strength. Um, But when I rededicated my life um, and I was introduced to the Holy Spirit, it was a game changer. Um, Doing life in our own strength leads to burnout, a spirit that is critical, judgmental, unloving, unjoyful, and kind, Restless, impatient, unfaithful, and out of control. But the Holy Spirit gives us good gifts, right? Um, His love teaches us, you know, that, you know, God is love, God is joy, God is peace, God is patience, God is kindness, God is gentle, God is faithful, and that he gives us self-control, a power of of love and and sound mind, right? When we love his word and we're led by the Holy Spirit with a humble heart, we get to live in his goodness. I love this image, and Pastor Gannon actually shared it with you this morning. I'm thankful that we're all different and unique individuals with different gifts working together to glorify God. There's no competition, but deep appreciation to be called his beautiful vessels. And it says here that we are his workmanship, um, his masterpiece. And maybe some of us may want to not look this way because we feel that we're not capable. But here you can see that there's bottle vases, gourd vases, cylinder vases, round vases, an an urn. Is that for ashes? Okay. (laughs) Technically, we died a self, right? So (laughs) ginger jar, botanical jar, pot, and bowl. And I think that um, it's it's a beautiful thing when God... um, has a perfect plan, a unique plan for each and every one of us, and that we don't need to look and say, I want to be like that person, or I need to be like this person, and you can just be you. And the love of the Lord will build you up in the faith and create you into that woman of God that he wants for you to be. Amen? Um, so 
Living in God's goodness, I know I was Googling online like what's fashionable right now. Did you know that animal prints is in right now? Is anyone wearing animal prints? <laughs> animal prints, uh, clothes that look like you're a knight in shiny armor, like shimmery stuff, you know? Um, and I thought, gosh, it's hard to keep up, right, with all that's going on out there, but um, the Lord has given us good things. And I have a picture of this van. Um, when, we were, uh, when we grew from a family of two to five, we knew that we need to get a, a bigger car. And so, um, <laughs> and, um, so we prayed and prayed and prayed, and I love how God helps us in all of our decisions. And so um, we, we purchased the car by faith. We didn't even look at a lot. We looked at three, I think. And um, when I was following my husband home from the car lot, I looked at the license plate, and it says um, JJ, which is our son's name. Yeah. And so um, I love these God moments because um, God wants us to, to give us good gifts. And it's not even really the gift, but the fact that he's in it. And his hands are all over it. And, and I've come to learn, and I'm still learning, how to love only what God loves and only want what he desires for us. And he desires for us to put on good clothes, you know, to be women who are dressed finely like daughters of the king. Um, he wants us to put on the whole armor of God um, so that we're equipped for every good work and that we're more than conquerors in him. Uh, the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, it's very precious in the sight of God. If there's anything that we have to say, let it be about him. Um, Proverbs 31, 26 says that she opens her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is a law of kindness. People should feel encouraged and uplifted after spending time with us. And our conduct should cause people to draw closer to God and his word. Um, God wants us to make good choices. He has great expectations, and his standards are always higher than what we will ever set for ourselves. Um, God called me to be a nurse at a season of my life when I was um, home with young children, all under the age of eight. And he said that I want you to become a nurse. And so I thought, that's crazy. <laughs> I'm like changing diapers still, you know, lacking sleep, all this stuff. And um, so the Lord, by his faith, the grace, you know, expedited everything. And I became a nurse and worked through um, to prepare for the pandemic, which the Lord showed us later, and then worked through the pandemic, and even working in the hospital now. And um, Psalm 62.5 says that my soul waits silently for God alone, my expectations from him. And um, I told God, you know, God, this is not the right time. Like, there's just a lot going on. <laughs> do you ever do that? Like, <laughs> you're laughing because you, you know, right? And, um, but the truth is, is that Ecclesiastes 3.11 says that he makes everything beautiful in his time. And I pray that when we're walking with the Lord, that we, we know that he holds time. And if he tells us to do something, that we would just do it because he, his plans are perfect. And it's not about us, it's about him. Philippians 2, 3 says, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others better than yourselves. It's good to put other people's needs before us. Um, when I was with, with young children, sometimes you have like, um, I'll tell you a funny story. Um, on my way to church um, for a Bible study, I needed a fig, you know, the fruit. And um, so I, our neighbor at the end of the street, she's, she's, um, she has this big fruit tree. And, you know, the figs fall, and she never picks it up. So I thought, well, it wouldn't hurt to just <laughs> go on her lawn and grab one. She wouldn't even know and miss it, right? Like you, day after day, because I was eyeing her lawn for some time. And so, um, so I got out of the car with the kids in the car on the way to church, and I got on her lawn, and it's not even that far from the curve, and I picked the few off the ground, and she came out. And she was yelling at me. And I said, I'm on my way to church <laughs> for a Bible study, and I need this thing, you know, to demonstrate. And it was just, it was like, the intention was good, but the Lord showed me that, you know, good intentions with selfish mode is, is still selfish, right? And so how important it is for us to, um, to not be selfish, but to esteem others better than ourselves. And I think that the better thing I could have done was actually knock on the door, right? 
and say, hey, I noticed you have this beautiful fig tree. Could I borrow it? You know, I, I go to this church, right? And engage the person. That would have been better. So I'm still learning. So don't steal fruit from people's lives. <laughs> Um, even if it's to help a Bible study. Um, Luke 6, 27, but to you who are willing to listen, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. Um, we, may not, we, may have enemy, we may not have enemies, but difficult people in our lives that will discourage us from maintaining good works, right? Um, his word tells us that whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everybody. And um, so I pray that We put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And, um, and the word says here in Psalms 23, 6, Surely goodness and unfailing love pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Um, why do we do what we do? Um, I think the Lord was showing me that in, in our walk with the Lord, um, because Jesus is our, the light in us, it can either grow dimmer or brighter. There's like no in-between, right? Um, and our faith in good works will leave God, a God testimony for the world who sees what we want to see. We want our lives broken before the Lord so the light in, in us will shine. And I love the story of Jochebed. Um, it says here in Hebrews eleven twenty three, By faith Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. Um, Jochebed chose to believe in God's promise. Um, Psalms 112, 7 says, they do not fear bad news, they confidently trust the Lord to care for them. Psalms 91, 4, God is prom um, faithful um, and that his promises are an armor and protection. Um, she discipled her children to love God and um, how you know is because Moses, when he grew up in Pharaoh's house, he actually chose rather to suffer the affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. He had everything, but he chose to look and have compassion on his people who were in, in bondage, right? Um, and Aaron became a high priest and led God's people in worship. And Miriam later called, uh, called a prophetess, led the women in worship unto the Lord. And I love here, if you notice in this passage, it says, because they saw that he was a beautiful child. Um, God had great plans for Moses, and Jochebed knew. Um, the Lord had confirmed in our heart. And we may not see beauty in everything that God does. Ask God to open our eyes to see his wonderful works. Um, Miriam I'm sorry, Jochebed chose to put on the Lord Jesus Christ, and she made good and righteous decisions. It says here that they were not afraid of the king's commands. How many times uh, fear creeps in, right? And it prevents us from walking by faith. Um, but Jochebed knew that, you know, God was in control and that he was going to help her walk through, you know, work all things out for good. And as a result... Um, she left a good testimony. Um, she's only mentioned a few times in the Bible, and it speaks a lot about just how humble she was, um, sacrificial, compassionate. She could have had beef with Pharaoh's daughter, right? And the Egyptians, because they were really mean to God's people, they enslaved them. And um, in, in Exodus, it talks about how um, Jochebed actually nursed Moses, and then actually gave him back to Pharaoh's daughter um, so that she can raise him as her own son. And it must have been a very tough decision, right, as a mother? Like, I don't know if I could even do that. But I know in Christ the Lord will help us to do that. Um, and in Micah, the testimony is that the Lord says, For I brought you out of Egypt and redeemed you from slavery. I sent Moses, Aaron, and Miriam to help you. Her children were used by God to save a nation from bondage. How awesome. How many of us become tired and weary in doing good? <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, <laughs> I, um, I currently work as a night shift nurse in the hospital. And so keep in mind that I've changed diapers for like eight, ten years. 
And the Lord says, I'm going to call you to be the nurse. I'm still changing diapers. Um, and being a nurse is hard because sometimes, you know, in, in, in the hospital when people are sick physically, they're not always nice. And so as nurses, um, we get punched, we get kicked, we get spit at. Even after caring for the patients because they're not feeling well, um, the reaction is to actually, it's, it's anger, right? Um, and so we've learned to, like, um, love our patients and care for them in spite of what they're going through, which is really difficult because I've seen some nurses, like, go at it with their patients, too. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. So um, <laughs> that's what not to do. But I, it's hard because, you know, I don't have people do it without the Lord, right? Because, honestly, the difference between that person and me is just I have the Lord. And, um, and so it's a rewarding job, but it comes with challenges. So, you know, it takes a toll on your body. I work nights because I don't want to miss out on. And, and that's another thing, too, is that you could ask God to give you a ministry that doesn't take you away from the ministry that he, he finds important, which is, you know, raising your kids and taking care of your family. So night shift really worked out. Even though I'm a morning person, God gave me night shift. Um, so... Um, I was explaining to my, my, my mother-in-law that my shifts run like 12, 10, sometimes you're running 10 to 12 hours, you know, without stopping. And um, so you're tired and um, people are not nice all the time. But um, you may not have, you're not, you may not be a nurse and you may not deal with sick people physically, but there's a lot of sick people spiritually, right, in our church, in our world. And I think church is like a big hospital. We come because we need to be healed by the Lord. And so Galatians 6, 9 says, Let us not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap the harvest of blessing if we don't give up. And the blessing um, that God has given me in the hospital is that I've been able to pray with my patients through the difficult times. I work with a lot of oncology patients, and, um, and I've worked... Um, there's so many intimate moments being um, with the patient for 12 hours. You get to really hear their stories. And so um, God is faithful. And when we put on the Lord Jesus Christ and ask him to help us, um, we're able to love and maintain the good works in spite of being kicked at and punched and you know, yelled at um, because he's our boss, right? And we do it because we love, um, we love the people that he loves. And I think that's another thing, too, is that it's been raining a lot here in, in, our, in California, right? Um, and so to go in at night when it's pouring rain, all you want to do is just call in and say, I'm sick. <laughs> you know? But the Lord, but I always have a, a, an army of sisters to pray for me before I go in because I know that it's, it, I need help, you know? And so um, surround yourself, you know, with people that can pray for you and encourage you. And I truly believe that the work that I'm doing in the hospital is based on the power of prayer. And I'm able to maintain a positive attitude and love of my patients because I put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm able to go in with a heart, because if it was up to me, I probably wouldn't even do it. But the Lord, seeing how much he loves these patients so much, should inspire us, right, to love the way that he loves. And I love in 2 Peter 3, 9, it says the Lord isn't really, um, he's really being, I'm sorry, the Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think so. No, he's being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but he wants everyone to repent. So just in closing, um, the way that we become a woman of promise is to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and live in his goodness so that we can leave a, good, a God testimony for all to see. If anyone hasn't told you or if you're, not, if you're not sure, the greatest love story is that Jesus died for us and that we can have new life in him. The greatest treasure is his word. You won the lottery. <laughs> um, and the promises that he made over 2,000 years ago is still true, alive, and active in us today. The greatest fear, and this, this one really touched me because... Um, the greatest fear is when the promises that God's given us dies with us. Because faith without works, as it says in James 2, 14 through 17, is dead. Um, 
And the greatest ministry and privilege is to know God and make him known. And I pray that um, when we go into our group time today, that we would thank God for all the promises that he's given us. I believe um, Andrea shared in our a leadership meeting this morning that there are promises that God has given each and every one of us. And, um, and if, if you, could, you could definitely ask God to confirm and show you how to live out that promise, right? Because we are his ambassadors, we're letters from Christ, and we want his word to continue and to be passed on to generations after generations. And it doesn't stop with us. And so I pray that, um, that you would be encouraged to keep going for the sake of the gospel, and that God would give you a new heart, new clothes, new mind, um, to do the things that he loves, um, because we want to see everyone in heaven. Amen? Amen. 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 Okay, can I pray for us? <laughs> okay. God, um, thank you so much for this time that you've given us, God, and I pray, Lord, that you would help us to live out your promises for us. Your your promises are good. And I pray, Lord, that you give us faith to live out those promises, Lord, and to leave a good testimony for all to see, Lord, that you're alive and you're real and that you love us, God. Um, bless our group time. Thank you for all the sisters here. Um, thank you for um, Andrea and Pastor Chet and all the leaders and how much they love us, God. I pray, Lord, that we would honor you all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.